Aston Villa are on fire. They were a shock to all since the 22-23 season when they finished in a European slot and have continued to improve. Now they've taken their performance to another level with an unexpected dominance in the Champions League and are top of the table. They even beat Bayern Munich. What a turnaround from just a couple of years ago when they pulled off the great escape even though they should have been relegated, and were saved by that infamous VAR error which saw Villa survive a last-minute winner. When Unai Emery took over Aston Villa in October 2022, Villa were in bad shape. They were 16th, one point from relegation, and there was a lot to be done if the club were going to survive. Not many believed that Emery had anything to offer. His Arsenal spell was seen as a failure to many, is it really? Click here to find out. So why did Aston Villa's owners believe that Emery was the man to help them navigate the treacherous waters of relegation? Before his Arsenal spell, Emery won three Europa League titles back-to-back -back with Sevilla. When he left Arsenal, he was equally as impressive at Villarreal, even if his football style wasn't. Emery won Villarreal, their first major trophy, and added to his Europa League collection, beating Arsenal on their way to winning it. That must have been a sweet victory for Emery, and that wouldn't be the only time he would get into Arsenal's way of winning a trophy. Emery lit Aston Villa up and even went on an impressive run with Villa. His thorough approach helped him quickly get the players on board and on his side. Emery is a workaholic who spends a supposed 12 hours a day at work, and with his approach, well, we're surprised it isn't more. Emery does research like a professor and goes over match videos of opponents to help prepare his players. His players also take part in these video sessions. And while reportedly the sessions were unpopular and considered tedious while he was at Arsenal, well, at Villa, the players are reportedly appreciative. They know exactly what he wants from them and they're eager to learn and get better. The club leadership are confident in Emery's ability to get the most out of his players. That So far, they haven't signed that many established players for him. Well, as long as those he has are improving. Every day I'm learning things from him and trying to bring my qualities to the game. He's given us all a lot of belief. He's added so many strings to players like myself's bows, teaching me things I didn't think I was capable of doing. McGinn said in 2023. And it's not only him. Ollie Watkins also revealed he understood what Emery was trying to teach him so he could maximise his ability to become a better forward. Emery instructed Watkins to stay central in the six-yard box rather than going out wide when Villa lost the ball. This wasn't the only tactical tweak that Emery introduced. Villa changed formation to either a 4-4-2 or a 4-2-3-1. While how they approach a game can be different depending on the opponents, the principles remain the same. Villa play a high line, which is dangerous, but the way they execute it is just excellent to watch. The centre-backs push up to the midfield as much as possible, more than most teams in the Premier League. Then they change their formation to a narrow 4-4-2 or 4-4-1-1 when their opponents are in possession. With this, opponents find it difficult to operate. Their 24-25 summer signing, Amadou Onana, is crucial to this setup, as he helps track opponent strikers and make sure he cuts the passing lanes to them. Onana is more than just a defensive juggernaut, he's also confident in possession and helps progress the ball for Villa. He's such a great pairing for Yuri Tielemans, who's not as defensively aware, but instead very technical and creative. Although, with that being said, Onana has been showing off his goal-scoring skills this season and has already notched a few goals. If opponents try long balls to beat Villa's high line, their players find themselves offside. In the 23-24 season, January alone, officials had made 106 offside calls against Villa's opponents. That's crazy. And what's even crazier is that, despite the high line, Aston Villa were one of the teams that faced the least shots from open play. After 21 games, they'd only faced 150. Not bad, and even more impressive when it's only Manchester City and Arsenal that faced fewer shots than them in that period. 
Their great defense is made up of Conza, Pau Torres, Luca Dean, and then Diego Carlos or Matty Cash, with Ian Mertzen trying to break into the first team too, and he has bags of potential. Villa's high line did eventually get broken and opponents beat their offside trap. Now, when they do so, and there isn't an offside call, well, their goalkeeper, Emi Martinez, swings to action to sweep the ball away. And after 21 games, he attempted 28 sweeper-keeper actions and was successful 27 times. Now, sometimes the ball is too far out for Martinez to come, but he's confident at keeping balls out of the net. Villa aren't just good at keeping opponents out, they're excellent at causing problems at the other end of the pitch too. And they do this in two ways. They go direct or they play the possession game. In possession, Aston Villa also crowd the midfield with one of their extra wide men, most especially John McGinn, tucking infield to become an extra attacking midfielder alongside Morgan Rogers, who's been in fine form so far. The space McGinn leaves on the flanks becomes occupied by the fullback playing behind him, and this helps eliminate imbalances on Villa's side. But it's the attack that's most exciting. Morgan Rogers has come onto the scene this season and has been excellent. Leon Bailey offers a great option out wide also, and is very creative and has scored some important goals for Villa and will continue to cause problems for Premier League defenders this season. But the main man is, of course, Ollie Watkins. He really found his goal-scoring boots last season, managing 19 goals, coming fourth in the Golden Boot ranking, his highest ever finish in these rankings. He even managed to give all England fans a huge moment of joy when he clinically slotted the ball into the bottom corner from a Cole Palmer assist against the Netherlands in the semi-final of the Euros before, well, do I need to say it? England disappointingly couldn't get over the line once again. Check out our video on England's new head coach, Thomas Tuchel, by clicking here and subscribe if you're enjoying the channel. Villa are a dynamic team and they will switch things up during the match. They can go direct when the opportunity presents itself and use the players on the flanks to achieve this. Their defenders, Diego Carlos and Pau Torres, are excellent long passers and they help Villa speed up their attacks from defence. It's one, two and bam, they're right in the opponent's half dealing damage. They were one of the teams with the best threats from direct attacks in the 23-24 season. However, in that season, they were not a high scoring team and didn't create as many chances. So last season, their shots per 90 was 13.59 and that was 10th in the league, lower even than Manchester United, who struggled to score goals that season. Villa made up for this with their strikers being lethal in front of goal, with Ollie Watkins leading the line and scoring 27 goals in 53 appearances. It was enough to help Villa secure top four and play in the Champions League in the 24-25 season for the first time in 42 years. This season, Villa have even evolved in front of goal. In the Premier League so far, in the 24-25 season, they've scored 15 goals. And this time, the burden of goal scoring isn't only on Ollie Watkins having fun with opposition goalkeepers. New boy Duran is slowly becoming the man for the big moments with his outrageous goal against Bayern in the Champions League and undisputed goal of the month for September against Everton. Speaking of the Champs League, Villa have been excellent in the competition and are defying expectations. They've had an excellent start to their campaign, winning their first three matches, scoring six goals and not conceding any. And they beat Bayern. Now, this wouldn't be the first time that they'd be beating Giants. They actually made a habit of beating teams bigger than them in the Premier League. They beat both Arsenal and Man City in the 23-24 season. They beat Arsenal again at the Emirates, which led to Arsenal eventually losing the league title to Manchester City. Due to their Champions League qualification, there was the expectation that Villa would lose steam. Well, they haven't. Their Champions League form is not even affecting their league form, with Villa able to deal with the schedule. This may come as a surprise to many, but Villa have had experience managing European competitions and the Premier League. They played in the Europa Conference League in the 23-24 season and did quite well. They beat Ajax and Lille in the knockout stage and at the quarterfinals. 
Unfortunately, Olympiakos proved to be too difficult for them and they ended their participation in the tournament in the semis. Emery himself is a master at managing European competitions as well as the domestic league after spending a large chunk of his career in those competitions. He has also spent his career managing players with egos, so he'll be able to deal with the John Duran situation, who rightfully so is demanding more playing time due to his stellar performances so far. Aston Villa are in a great place right now, but there is a growing problem with their squad that had started last season. Villa have both Watkins and Duran, and the problem is the two of them want to start. But the way Villa is set up, well, they don't want to use two strikers at once, even when they play 4-4-2. Morgan Rogers slots in as the second striker, and Rogers has been great so far for Villa too, and is more of a complete player than Duran. He's great on the ball, scoring, creating chances, and progressing the ball into dangerous areas. Off the ball, he's an incredible passer. With these attributes, Rogers plays as a second striker at times, with his role being servicing the main striker. Duran doesn't like this. He wants to start, and even wanted to force a move from Villa to West Ham. Reports claim Emery convinced him to stay and fight for his place. Duran has shown remarkable improvement, and is currently the striker on form. So when he finally got his first start in the Champions League and scored, well, he was angry at being substituted. Emery claimed everything was under control, but this wouldn't be the first time Duran would show such an attitude, but more of him in another video. So Emery has Villa in an excellent place right now. Will they be able to maintain their form both in the Premier League and the Champions League? Or will they eventually lose steam like a lot of teams do?